All right, so for the next activity, you guys are gonna look at uh, three of the main theories of representation. So basically, when you take a look at that McCain example, uh, it's kind of like, man, why did this guy ultimately end up acting the way he did when he was part of the Republican Party who for years and years wanted to get rid of the Affordable Care Act? So like it, it can be tough to kind of predict the behavior. So what political scientists have done is they've come up with a bunch of theories to kind of say, OK, why is it that, you know, members of Congress act the way that they do? So take this into account. I mean, just like in any profession, you know, you have norms, you have expectations. Uh, so as a teacher, I have to behave a certain way, whereas a president would have to act a certain way. And, you know, once you see uh, decades of examples or years of examples of how people behave, you can kind of get a sense, OK, they kind of fit this mode or this mode or this mode. And that that's in all different um, <clears throat> professions. So. Again, why is it that we do what we do? Now, in politics, to kind of get a sense of the behaviors of members of Congress, they've come up with three real main ones. There's this representational view, which basically says members of Congress will vote uh, or act in a certain manner while a piece of legislation is going through by taking into account what their uh, constituents want. So that's why I put this picture up here to hopefully help you remember this. This is the district map from the 2016 election. And you can see, I mean, gosh, you know, a lot of red in the middle and you're blue on the sides, right? So if I'm someone out here in uh, blue county out in uh, California and I got a vote coming up and I know that my... Um, <clears throat> constituents are really engaged in this bill. Well, and I know they're going to be really angry if I don't vote on this bill the way that they want me to vote based on their views. I'm going to be in some trouble. So I'm going to take on this theory where I will vote to represent my constituents. That will be what really focuses me. Uh, same thing if I'm, you know, deep into Texas, very, very red, you know, I'm going to consider what my conservative constituents want, and I'm going to vote with them in mind. Second one is this idea of the organizational view. So this is where I went with the picture of Democrats versus Republicans. Remember, when you go into Congress, you have a lot of individual power, but you're either basically a Democrat or Republican, and you're going to work with your party in an attempt to get legislation passed, to put your platform forward. When you think back to that party platform term that we talked about in unit one with the election cycle. And if I, if, if, if like my constituents aren't really involved in this, they don't have strong opinions on it. Maybe I don't have strong opinions on it either. Well, then I'm going to vote the way my organization goes. I'm going to vote the way my party leadership wants me to, or my other friends in the party who I trust. And they say, you know what? Uh, Dems want to vote this way. And I'm a Democrat, so I'm going to go with them because. And same with Republicans. And then finally, there's this thing called the attitudinal view, which is basically going with this picture here. It, it's based on your ideology. So, you know, my constituents aren't that interested in what I'm voting on. Uh, you know, my organization, my, my party's saying one thing. But you know what? My ideology is telling me otherwise. So I'm going to vote first with my ideology. Uh, so if I'm a liberal, you know, I'm going to go in one way, if I'm a conservative, the other. Now, for this activity, uh, <clears throat> we're looking at these three thematic categories, which can be coming into mind here to, again, help you to make connections to this social, political, and then perspective. And really, you can apply each one of these. Social, you can look a lot to uh, representational, also say attitudinal. You look at political uh, and perspective can really come into organizational. And I'll really look at perspective, connecting that to attitudinal. So what I want you guys to figure out for me here is based on the information from the videos, it should be a plural there, which theory is reflective and why? So I'm gonna give you guys two examples here. So the first one uh, is going to be from the impeachment process. And you're gonna watch Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. So she leads the Democrats 
really kind of explaining uh, what she thinks or, or kind of how she's telling her members how to act in this situation. So this is early on in the impeachment proceeding uh, when everything was new, when uh, we were just in the uh, exploratory aspects of this. And there was a lot of division throughout the country in terms of, well, where are we going on this vote? And this was really important as well for Democrats who were in states and in districts that in 2016, uh, the president had performed very well in. So what do we tell those people to do? How are you going to tell them to act? So that's example one. Now, example two is uh, going back to the nightclub shooting uh, in 2016 in Florida. So this one's going to deal with the aftermath of this. And uh, it's really going to be focusing on the different reactions in the party to the topic of gun control. So that one should, uh, hopefully after you read this, be a little bit more obvious. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, articles here. It's brief, just a little bit over the pa over a page, and it's going to hit on each one of these three again. Uh, these three different theories. So give you a little paragraph on each one. So first, uh, read the article in your notes. In your notes, excuse me. Either define each theory or in an outline format. So just for each one, list a couple of central characteristics. Again, you can go back to what I've been talking about to pull out some ideas as well. Then I want you to watch each video. They're both relatively short, just quick news reports, uh, though. Yeah. So again, in your notes, what are some of the key facts? What do you notice? What are some of the things that uh, Speaker Pelosi is talking about? Uh, what are some of the things that you heard in the gun control, uh, the gun shooting video uh, from the different uh, congressmen who were speaking here? And then I want you to compare both sets of notes to really think, OK, when I consider this theory in relation to what Speaker Pelosi saying or in relation to what uh, the Congress uh, men and women were saying in the other video, like, what do I hear? Do I hear them talking about the attitudinal view or the organizational view? So, again, this is one of those ones that'd be great to talk out uh, to get a little bit of comparison going there. But I want you to take a guess. OK, which theory do you think is reflective? What do you hear? So when you get to Canvas for each scenario in one to two sentences, identify which theory you believe is reflective and why. So for that first one, you'll say, well, I believe uh, that, uh, you know, I hear the organizational view because Speaker Pelosi is talking about blah, 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 blah. Or in the gun control video, I hear representational view because blah, 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 blah. So I can accept different answers here based on your interpretation. I'm just looking for a quick a uh, bit of explanation of why you saw that or, or what you heard or what brought to you that conclusion, just to try and get a sense of the different things, uh, different ideas, different uh, aspects that influence uh, the decisions that our Congress men and women make. So I'll stop there and you can go to that video or to the activity.